All right, people, what's up, everyone, and welcome to another video, and I'm here to give you a quick review, and I'm going to try to make this super quick, because I don't really have a lot to say about this one, for a movie called Uma, which you might not have even known came out this weekend, and if you didn't, don't worry, I don't even think Sony knew this movie was coming out, uh, especially since they uh, showed the first ever trailer for this movie two weeks before it came out. Two weeks, that might be one of the quickest, like, release of first trailer to release of movie in theaters I've ever seen. Like, even Netflix gives, a, a like, a, a, a like three or four weeks, uh, unless it's, like, some real crap, then they just, whatever. Um, which, this is, this is, I'm not, I'm gonna spoil my review here. Th this movie is crap. It's not mega crap, but it's not very good. But, uh, anyway, so Uma stars Sandra Oh, who I really like. I think she's great. Uh, and I think she's really good in this movie. I'm just gonna spoil that right here. Let me get the positives out of the way. There's some neat visuals, and Sandra Oh is really good. That's about it. Oh, Dormat, Dormat, Dormat Moroni, is that his name? Uh, I like him. He, he was good in it too. But uh, yeah, this this movie has some merits. It, it does. I just said some of the merits. It's short too. It's like 80 minutes without the credits. So we got that too. Uh, it tries. It tries to tell a story that is... It's pretty much hereditary light. If you've ever seen hereditary about the mother and daughter relationship there, it was very, very vague in that movie but very much like i don't know how to explain it like it, it was vague more way more vague in that movie it wasn't a hundred percent about the mother-daughter relationship there um and i'm talking about the the uh tony collette's character's mother and their relationship they, you never see them interact in that movie really so uh you know the, the mother was controlling so it's kind of like that if it was a, a light version of hereditary that's half the length not rated R, and does not have a good script at all, but it has decent performances. Um, so it's like that. Uh, Sandro's character is 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 a kind of a kind of a shut in, I guess. She's a beekeeper, which she makes honey. You know, she gets honey from bees, which is a little weird, but whatever. Um, and she has a daughter who helps her with the bees and stuff. And they're both in isolation. They don't use electricity. There's a reason for that in the movie. I'm gonna spoil the reason for why it's in the movie at all, so they can have dark scenes where. Sandra was just looking around in the dark. Yeah, it's that fucking type of movie where characters just look around in the goddamn dark. And go, oh, 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 what is that? Is that a, is that a g -g -g ghost? It is. Oh, I jumped in front of the camera. Oh my god. You know, it's one of those. It's fucking Scooby Doo shit. And I'm so sick of horror movies like this. I, I just can't. Um, you know what? I'm not even gonna talk about the movie anymore. Uh, it has a a a decent premise for a story. It's about the mother passes away. Um. The remains of the mother are sent to Sandra's character, the daughter, and she has to bury it, and she doesn't want to because they had a, uh, a bad relationship. Um, and then the mother starts haunting Sandra O oh, and and slowly transforming her kind of into her. And she's being abusive to her daughter, yada, yada, whatever. It's a, it's a decent premise. They just don't do it well here, and they don't really build on it. And nothing is ever convincing, you know? Like, Sandra O oh is good in the movie, but I never was convinced she... She, uh, she even had a daughter like they, like this mother daughter relationship is it feels very forced the uh, actress that plays the daughter is not the best so um so sandro and her daughter in the movie not the best chemistry Derm Dermot Moroni's barely in it but he's all right um i i just i just never really cared about any of the characters didn't matter how short the movie was you can tell a, a interesting story in less than five minutes if you're really good at writing um and this movie's 80 minutes and you just did not care about any character at least i didn't you know some people might but by the end of the movie i'm just like i don't care just wrap it up uh i'm gonna stop talking about the movie i'm gonna give the movie again it has some merits there's some interesting visuals um one they spoil immediately in the trailer like if you watch the trailer like the first half they spoil the the best visual i'm not gonna spoil it here in case you didn't watch the trailer but there's one cool little visual which really doesn't lead to anything it's just there so they can have something cool is a creature in the movie. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, that's one neat thing. Again, Sandro is good, uh, and I like the premise of the story, and some of the other actors do a good job, I guess. Um, but it's just, and it's short, I guess. But it's just so nothing. It's just so like jump scare horror, obvious jump scares. I was the only one in my theater, and I'm I'm, I'm going to stop talking about the movie now. I'm going to give it a four out of ten. It's not terrible, like really bad, but it's just like. Bleh. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to talk about the movie anymore because I want to talk about my theater experience. I talked about this on the podcast we did recently. Um, I had a weird experience. I'm going to tell it real quick because it's not that 
interesting, but it's more interesting than this movie. Uh, I was in the theater by myself. Nobody there. Uh, I didn't realize this until after I saw the movie, but I guess I booked a ticket for the subtitle version because um, the movie has subtitles. And, I, I, and for some reason, my brain wasn't processing that there was even subtitles on the screen, even when people weren't talking Korean. Uh, so I wasn't I didn't even really, you know, like when they're speaking English, there's subtitles too. And my brain was not processing that uh, until after I was done watching all the movies I saw the same day. Um I, uh, I was like, oh yeah, there, there was, oh yeah, there was subtitle, what the hell? Um, I guess I bought a subtitle version, so, the, for, like, the ticket, closed captioning, but, uh, or whatever it's called, uh, it, it said something like that. Anyway, I was there, by myself, nobody there, at, like, 3 p.m., and I hear this noise in the background, and I'm like, what the fuck? It sounds like somebody's talking behind me, there's nobody in this theater with me, so immediately, I'm watching a horror movie, which, by the way, if the horror movie was good and actually scary, like a hereditary, then that would have made me shit my pants, going, who the fuck is here? I thought maybe someone was in the projection, the projection booth or something, talking or whatever, but it was like, for a solid 20 minutes, I keep hearing this, and I'm like, what the fuck? And at a certain point, I realize that the movie gets quiet and it says like seven years later or something like that. It says like, you know, it says just on screen black seven years later or something or 12 months later or something. And then, and then I hear it in the background. I hear it seven, seven, whatever, whatever, how much time passed by later. I hear it like vaguely. And I realized that I guess, I don't know how this theater works when it comes to like the, the audible, just dis- like uh, audio description v- devices or whatever, where you can ask for them in uh, at the, um, the counter of the box office. I was hearing, like, someone reading what's happening, or just speaking what's happening in the movie, so, like, every time, like, Sandra Oh was walking through the dark, it was like, Sandra Oh's character walks through a darky, a, 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 a darky, a dark hallway, and she's, she's just, she's looking around at nothing, and I'm like, fuck. so I have this fucking shit behind me now, uh, immediately, I'm, a, like, when I find out what it is, I'm fucking, I, I go from kind of, creeped out to fucking pissed because now I have to hear this shit behind me the entire movie um and and I have to watch the fucking movie so I have I have the movie doing it and then I have it behind me the the whatever the device was behind me I don't know if it was like someone left it there and you could just hear it or like I have no idea it, you just hear it you just hear it in the background I have no idea if it was like a device you asked for at the box office and you carry it with you and you plug in a headset so you can listen to it or whatever or it's like a part of one of the seats or something. These seats are really shitty. They're not reclining seats or anything, so I'm assuming that's not the case. It must be like a device you ask for um, at the box office. You carry what you and it connects to the projector, and you can hear everything. I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, the entire time, I was just fucking listening to that shit. Um, so that was great. The movie is very quiet at times, too, so I'm just hearing, looking through a dark hallway. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, nobody else was in the theater besides me. I don't know why the fuck that thing was on. <laughs> it's just me. This is me. I don't need a, a play-by-play. Literally, you could be blind and understand what's going on in this fucking movie because there's nothing going on. It's so generic. It is so generic. It really is, this movie. Um, this was supposed to be a quick review, but it ended up being longer than my X review, so what the fuck. Um, not very good. Sandro is, is, is good in it, but she's usually always good, so I don't know fuck that means. Whatever. She tried, at least. And she's a producer, I think, too, so, yeah. It tries to tell a story and have some culture to it, too, you know, so you learn about Korean culture. Oh, there's also some really, really, really shitty ADR, also. I should really drop that in, because there were some really bad ones where, like, Sandra O's character, I don't remember the character's names because I don't give a shit. Uh, Sandra O's character uh, is talking to her daughter and, and describing certain, like, things from her culture or whatever uh, about burials and stuff. And you could tell the audio was so bad. You could tell. Cert, like certain lines were ADR later like the quality of the audio was different and the way she was speaking was different like it was like shot months later uh it was only certain parts where she's like explaining certain things like we use this to bury our dead or whatever and then like you could tell like they had the ADR lines because she was too vague the first time where she says she says like uh, I use this and we put it over the face but they don't explain why and then she comes in ADR like like <laughs> Like, but because of uh, demon spirits or some shit, I don't know. Uh, I'm just making it up because I don't remember anything about this movie. I just remember the ADR being really bad. And there's a few uh, sequences like that too. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just not a great movie. Uh, sadly, I I appreciate it tried to do something different um, with its story, not with its content, because it's all the same shit. It's like, um, and the ending there was a there was a really 
decent touching moment at the end. I will say. I should bring that up. But anyway, I'm done. So that was Uma. Um, and I was also really upset. It's not about Uma Thurman. So what the fuck? I mean, I know there's an extra M, but I just thought maybe they, you know, they, I thought they might, like, typoed it or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Uh, four out of ten. Not great. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Bye.